Uh, it was a great weekend. Um, I thought we got better with each match. Um, I've talked about the way that we scheduled. It was a lot of teams that won their conference, a lot of teams that made the NCAA tournament. Uh, and they're really, really good volleyball teams. Um, maybe not as physical as some of the, the blue bloods in the world, but uh, really, really well coached, really good volleyball teams. And just I'm happy we made it out of there with three wins. And uh, our team continues to improve with each match we play, with each practice we have. Uh, they're actually finishing up. Uh, we just finished up practice right now. And I thought even today we got better at a few things. So uh, we're looking forward to the weekend. Uh, again, three tough opponents. And uh, they're starting to get equally good as vo at volleyball and then more physical as we go here. So uh, looking forward to the challenges that await. We'll start front row on the right side to Travis. Uh, with the new coaching staff, is there any surprise at how well the, the system, the philosophy has, has taken and, and what's been kind of the key to, to rolling off five? Yeah, I didn't think we'd be this good this fast. Um, and there's still room to improve. Um, but I, I think the players have bought in to some extent. I think uh, when you get the first win or the first two wins, then all of a sudden the next week of practice, there's a little bit more buy-in. And then the next week, there's a little bit more buy-in. Uh, so I think that, but just a testament to my staff and our girls, just uh, the amount of work that's gone in. Again, especially the spring. Just uh, We just broke every single skill down and broke every single system down and uh, kind of reworked the way we think about the game. And um, I think there were probably some eyebrows raised from the girls at first. And then again, I think the first weekend when all of a sudden we we're hitting 380 or whatever we hit, it's like, okay, maybe there is a different way to play this game. And uh, again, buy-in. We'll go back behind the lights on the left side to Tyler. You know, after being on the, the road for so long at the beginning of the season, I mean, how just excited are you to, yeah. to you know, be back at home? And then, you know, kind of your first real, you know, regular season home, invitational at, at a &M. Yep. Tyler, I'm curious to know what you look like one day because it's just a silhouette back here. But <laughs> um, uh, yeah, really excited to get home. Um, and I think, one, just the wear and tear of being on the road. Uh, I'm feeling it a little bit today. I'm sure our girls are, too. So. Uh, we practiced a little bit shorter today, but um, the biggest thing is again the 12th man. Um, and I talked about it after our exhibition. It was just I was blown away at a at a match that it meant something, but it it, it wasn't an actual match with an actual rivalry. It was a really good opponent. Um, but I was just blown away that one, how many people showed up for an exhibition, and then secondly, just how vocal everybody was and how much you felt the crowd. Um, and I heard the football game was averagely attended also. So uh, amazing sell out there. But watching that on TV on the way back, it's just I'm um, lucky, blessed, happy, any other word that you can think of to be here at a place where uh, that can happen, where that many people can show up to a football game, uh, where that many people show up to a volleyball match and, again, are vocal about it. And uh, I think you saw last week, but uh, the University of Nebraska set the record for the number of people that watched a woman's sport, not even just volleyball. But they had 90,000 or 92,000 and 176 or something like that people show up to watch a volleyball match. And I think this is the only maybe or maybe one of the only other places where I could see that happening. Uh, and it's because the tradition of the 12th man, because of the passion of the alumni base. Uh, and we're excited to get home and, and start building towards that, of starting to uh, have a crowd around us and put a product on the floor that people want to be around. So um, we're really, really excited to play in front of the 12th man again. We'll go third row on the right side to Richard and then to Rob. Yes, Coach, you talked last week about wanting to see how your team uh, handles a challenge. You certainly got that on Thursday, yeah. five sets, and then being down in that yeah. fifth set. So just curious, could you could take us through that and how they came out of that, and you know, how do you think you're handling it since then? I basically said exactly what you just said. We were down 8-2. I called the timeout, and I said, well, this is my last timeout. It's probably the last time I get to talk to you. He said we wanted a challenge. Here we go. And uh, sent them on their way to say, hey, one point at a time and see what happens. Um, and then they called a timeout at, I think, 7-8, eight, 6-8 uh, eight or something like that. And I just said, hey, just a reminder that pressure works in two ways. Uh, we felt it at the beginning of this, but as we're coming back, it's going to start squeezing around them. If we can handle it 1% better, then we're going to be in a great spot. And I thought the team bought into that, so going to buy and going into learning. Uh, I thought the rest of that match, they kind of felt that. And I thought the rest of the tournament, uh, we decided to apply that type of pressure the entire time. Uh, so just when you take over a team, you have these little lessons that you can learn within things. And I thought that was a big moment for us of being able to be down 8-2 and in that moment kind of find a way to loosen up a little bit, play, and then understand that pressure is something that we can use, not something that uses us. Uh, and I thought we did that for the rest of the tournament on our opponent. We'll go fourth row on the left side to Rob. Howdy, Coach. So you, so you mentioned the Nebraska deal. What, what do you think it would take um, to – have 92,000 Aggies yeah. watching uh, volleyball at Kyle Field. Well, I heard Kyle if it's 110, so. Um, it takes kindling of people being interested. 
It takes, on our side, putting out a product that people want to watch. And I think that's a high level of volleyball that can be, I don't know, ranked in the country, but also an entertaining style, an entertaining personality that draws people in. And the biggest compliment that I got over the weekend was as we were leaving, there were three people from Bowling Green that told me, like, uh, one, you're now my favorite team to watch in, uh, uh, besides Bowling Green. Uh, I won't throw them under the bus. Uh, and then a couple people just said, your team's really fun to watch play. Uh, so that's our responsibility is to be fun to watch, uh, to be entertaining to watch, to win. And then it's hopefully the, the 12th man showing up and not just showing up once, but falling in love with what we're doing. And it's five people hopefully, I don't know, coming to a match and maybe two of them won't like it, but they're going to invite five friends each. And then that process happens over and over again. And um, I think we need to grow a fan base similar to what Nebraska has of selling out 9,000 people in an arena every single night. Um, and then that can happen. Um, but again, I just I don't see that happening in a lot of other schools or a possibility of it happening. Um, and that's why I'm excited to be here. We'll go front row on the right side to Brent. So do you think Texas could do – I'm just I'm kidding. No. We're back to Texas. <laughs> yeah. No. no I, I, asked, I wanted to ask a follow from last week. You said you had a very unique skill set. Um, what, what did you mean by that in terms of – My coaching? job progression? Uh, I was one of the best in the world at uh, using video and statistics to analyze what was going on within the game. Um, so that's where I got my start was, uh, and in, it was just, I was really, really good at that. So, uh, what Evan Antal does with our staff, uh, was my main role when I joined the national team. And then from there, as I learned and developed as a coach, I started to get more coaching responsibilities. And by my third Olympic cycle, I was the main assistant on that team. We will stay on the front row to Cole. Coach, just given back and looking at your time from the USA team, the national exposure that they were able to receive, have you noticed that the uptick in terms of uh, popularity has increased with the likes of uh, volleyball, women's sports just in general? And do you think that the NCAA needs to do a better job of promoting women's sports? Yeah. Can I ask a question first? Is this uh, for show or am I allowed to drink this? You can have it. Uh, cool. Just to make sure it wasn't a sponsor thing. Can I put it in the nicely uh, placed Yeti? No? That's for show. That's for show. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Good to know. Uh, question was about women's sports growth in volleyball. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I think, one, we've been very proud within our sport of the fact that our sport has grown organically. Um, there hasn't been a counter to it. And if anything, the men's sport has grown because of the women's sport. Uh, so we're very proud of the fact that our game is the thing that's entertaining, that's drawing people into it. Uh, and I think, in general, women's sports are growing. Um, I think there's a little bit more exposure, like you were talking about, and the fact that uh, it's put on TV more. Uh, our national championship is going to be on ABC for the first time this year, and I think that's an amazing thing. If we get to see, hey, if it's on mainstream broadcast, what's going to happen? Uh, we're starting to see more matches on ESPN2, on ESPN1, and another reason why I took this job is the SEC is on ESPN. I think we actually have uh, an advantage over the Big Ten and the fact that they're on Big Ten Network and a little bit hidden. Uh, for example, that match uh, with Nebraska, like the one complaint that people had is it wasn't on, uh, on air, on ABC, on NBC, on something that it could have been, I don't know, celebrated a little bit more. Uh, so I think there's an exposure piece. Um, I think our game is getting more exciting. Uh, I think the offense is starting to be run faster, so you're starting to get some more open nets and um, some more highlight type plays. Uh, and I think the level of athletes getting more exciting. Um, and I think a combination of all of those, those things is causing our sport to blow up, and I'm excited about what happens next. We'll go fifth row on the left side. Howdy, Coach. Howdy. You kind of touched on it, but what would be your elevator pitch for someone that's new to the sport of volleyball, or how do you sell someone on come and watch the sport of volleyball, maybe not just A&M volleyball, but volleyball in general? Yeah, I think it's – for me, for me, the reasons why I love this game is it's a combination of the skill of golf, where you have to have a, the unique swing in order to hit the ball the same every single time. But at the same time, it's the athleticism of a soccer or a football for Sam, who's in the stands here. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, where it's, it's fast, and there's a grace, and there's a level of skill to it that all of this stuff has to combine in order to be played at a high level. Um, and I think I would also just recommend that people watch it played at the highest level possible. Uh, if you watch the Olympics, it's a different uh, game just because, again, the amount of power, the amount of speed that happens uh, is pretty unique. So uh, I would say just watch for the level of skill that it takes to, I don't know, to play the game. Watch for the level of amplitude you're seeing athletes get off the ground and how quickly they move. Uh, and then learn a little bit. Um, part of our Maroon Club, our, our booster club, like one of my goals there is to teach people enough to have an opinion about the game. 
so that they could, I don't know, get done with it and say that some call that I made was stupid, uh, but not enough to actually be right when they tell me I'm stupid. Um, but I think learn enough about the game. And I, I don't know, for this crowd, I'd be happy to help educate. Like, if you want to come to our practices, feel free. Uh, if we want to run something in the media about, hey, this is the game of volleyball and the rules and what to look for, I'm, I'm happy to be here and be available. But uh, I, I love this game. I want it to grow, not just here at Texas A&M, but the entire country. So uh, I think we as the SEC are looking to grow it also in terms of, uh, again, what's broadcast on ESPN and how it's broadcast. So uh, if anybody wants, I don't know, to team up on that, I'm happy to be here as a resource.